It's a little windy, so bear with me, but we are gonna pick grapes today, and we're gonna make some jelly. I want you to look at that. That, that's a lot of grapes. Now these are Champanelle grapes. Bunch of them underneath there. There's a big bunch of grapes there. Clusters and clusters and clusters of grapes. Almost at the end of the row here. Grapes there. That cluster of grapes is a foot and a half long. Uh, back up in here. I mean, just, oh my gosh. So, I should have uh, tamed these vines a little bit, and we'll do that. But for right now, I need to pick grapes. Whew, and I'll let you hit me. Okay, I've got my nifty little Fiskers. My basket down here. I mean, those are beautiful, sweet. Some of them overripe, probably, because I should have probably done this a week ago. But they're supposed to ripen in uh, early July, first week or two of July. So. And I've got some green ones that are coming on. I mean, uh, uh, Brantwell. I don't you can see that without me moving the camera. I'll, uh, I'll show them to you in a minute. Try to remember to. But brand new clusters that are coming on. So, uh, anyway, this is going to make some grand. Ooh, I got me a limb. I got part of the vine. Some great grape. Great grape. Great grape. Jelly. So, you're tired of my watching me do this? Let me move on and show you how much you got. But, uh, man, that's a, that's a pretty grape. And uh, I don't know what the Brex level is. I don't measure all that. Don't really know much about it. But, very sweet grape right now. Again, I'm, I'm maybe a little late picking them. Maybe that's why they're so sweet. But, um, I'll show you the uh, how many I get. But it's going to be a bunch. <laughs> And I will say right now, and I'll probably say it again at the end, I'm going to take a lot of cuttings off these champanelles this fall and hopefully next spring have a lot of champanelle plants to sell because this, this grape has just gone crazy. These are the second, third year, third year grape. Last year I got a nice crop off of them, made that wine with it. They were two years old. They'd been in the ground for a year and a half, you know, one year basically when they started growing last year and produced. So... Champanel, C-H-A-M-P-A-N-E-L, Champanel. And some of these aren't ripe, and those will get popped out before I uh, put them through my little doodad. And I've got to show you my doodad. You're going to want one, so you got to stay tuned. So here's what I came up with. These are half bushel baskets, so there's a bushel and a half. <clears throat> That's a bushel basket, about half full. So there's basically two bushels of grapes. 50 foot row <clears throat> of Champanelle grapes. And I mean some of these are just as pretty a cluster as you'd see on TV and anywhere else. I mean, just beautiful. So, <clears throat> that is my grape harvest. Um, tickled at it. Now, if you can bear with me, I'm going to go in and make some jelly. So I'm running grapes through it. And as you can see, it is working. It is very easy to turn like one, you know, a finger in your thumb. Not a problem at all. Lots of nice grape juice coming out. Okay, I'm making the grape jelly. I, I'm, basically, I'm just following the uh, sure gel recipe. Now, this is this is sure gel um, for low sugar. So it may be something you want to look into. Maybe I can find it everywhere. I'll put a link to uh, both sure gels below 
And uh, this is my, I've already put all the sugar in there, waiting for it to get the sugar and the pectin, uh, sure gel. I'm waiting for it to come back to a rolling boil. And when it does, I will uh, set the timer for one minute, then I'll remove from the heat as per instructions. It's got to come to a rolling boil that is boiling even as I stir it. So when it does that, again, I'll um, set the timer. It's pretty much there. It's close. Uh, set the timer and um, do it for one more minute. Take it off the heat. Pour it up into my jars. My jars are heating up in the oven. So uh, I don't have any issues when I pour hot liquid in hot jars. And we're going to make us some grape jelly. Stirring a pot is boring. I'll let you go for now. <laughs> okay, got the jars out of the oven. I just went ahead and put this in a, a Tupperware pitcher. It's pretty hot, but this pitcher is uh, pretty tough too. This is gonna make more than I thought it was gonna make. I have to get me some more jars. Sure gel says to pour it about an eighth of an inch from the top, which is unlike most canning things that say leave about a half inch of headspace or an inch. So I'm feeling that maybe not a half, maybe not quite an eighth from the top. Maybe it's more uh I mean, a little more than eight, probably, probably more like a quarter. Now this may be about right then. I got a thirteen or fourteen jars here, maybe fifteen. And then we'll process the <coughs> process this in the canner for five minutes. I'll probably go a little longer than that. It's five minutes for jelly, and. Um, 10 minutes for jam, and I'll probably go uh, I'll probably go just go ahead and do the 10 minutes. That is perfect. I got a scoop or two left over. I'll just go back and fill up the ones that aren't quite there. I wipe off the lids. I mean wipe off the uh, the jar lids. The rims, excuse me, and um, put on the lids that I've got in the water, in some hot water over there, just got off the stove, and uh, then we'll be done. If you don't have one of these canning kits, that is the neatest thing. My wife just loves this. I, I, I bought it for years ago, and she has just commented several times, man, she's so glad I bought it. Doesn't take much to please my wife, apparently. Uh, it's got um, some tongs, three different sets of tongs for three different three different applications. Um, that's a jar wrench there, kitchen tongs. But that's the thing she likes, that magnetic lid lifter. Uh, it, You don't have to reach it down in that hot water to get that lid out. Just pick it up with the magnet, and then you lift your jars with the uh, uh, jar lid. And it's got that canning funnel. Somebody asked me about that canning funnel. It includes a canning funnel, too. That is just the neatest little kit for home canning. I don't think you ought to be without it. I will put a link to it below the video, so look for the link. Here's that magnetic lid lifter. That works. Tighten those pretty dang tight, and they're pretty dang hot. Process in the canner for uh, about five minutes for jelly, ten minutes for jam. After it starts boiling, it's beginning to boil a little bit, but I'm gonna wait till it comes a pretty good boil. Set my timer. So here's my jelly. Um, you know, when you get it out <clears throat> after processing, you put it on a, don't lay it on a cold surface like your countertop, put it on a towel. Uh, no drafts, turn off fans and such. 
and um, let it uh, let it seal. I've already heard a bunch of popping in here, so uh, some of them sealed pretty quick, and um, rest of them will be on their way, I'm sure, and I hope. Um, I've got to come back in here and do something. When once they seal, I've got to trade out that ring and that ring because that white ring belongs on that fancy smancy quilted type fancy smancy jar and if I leave that ring on that jar and that ring on that jar I'm just not gonna be able to sleep tonight <laughs> but that's just the kind of guy I am I'm weird that way are you are you weird that way if you see a picture hanging sideways does it just bug you I'm not saying I'm gonna get out of my recliner to go straighten it but it bugs me <laughs> okay here they are uh, I'll put some on pancakes in the morning I decided on toast rather than pancakes. That's the grape. It didn't gel as well as it needed to, but it hadn't been 24 hours either. And they said wait for 24 hours. And that is the blackberry. I know the blackberry is good. So, go have me some toast, maybe a couple pieces of bacon. Here it is. Here we go.